Well, I thank God I'm here. Thank God, Steve, for what he's doing and what he's fixing to do. I just thank the Lord for an opportunity to even do anything for him. It's an honor and a privilege. Because God knows he's done so much for me. Now, before I get into this message, there's... God wants me to ask you a question. He come by Friday morning and he asked me a question. And it was on what Amy preached did he, Thursday night. I've said it, she said it. I've said I ain't walking on water. And my shadow's not healing nobody. But my Lord come by Friday morning and he asked me a question. So I'm going to ask you. How many times have you been down to Red River? How many hospitals have you walked in? How many sick folk have you been around? This ain't the message. This you're getting this free. I can never walk on water sitting on my butt. My shadow will never heal nobody until I walk out. What the Lord was telling me, Nikki, get off your butt and try. Faith without works is dead as a hammer. Now I'm going to tell you, I got to say what God says. We say we got faith, but it's dead as a hammer. Because we ain't got no works. How many of us say, well, that person, let me, let me use, can I use you as an example? See, God spoke something to you tonight, and I don't know, you probably didn't understand it. I did. He give you something, and I'll talk to you after church about it. That's what the Holy Ghost was telling her. But I know the devil was tormenting her mind. You got something to deliver for God, now do it. But see, my God knows what he's doing. But Tina, when are we going to go and start acting like the sons and daughters of God and quit humping up in the corner? This is free. That ain't my message. God help you on this message. But he come by and he asked me, he said, how many times you been down to Red River? I said, God, none. He said, then how do you know you can't walk on it if you never try? If I never put forth an effort with God, God is waiting. He's ready continually to move. But he's waiting for that heart and that soul that will have the faith of God and get off its seat and walk and say, if Nicky's sick, he'll walk over here and he'll say, in the name of Jesus, be thou made whole and walk away knowing that God has done done it. But most of us are, well, what if I go over there and I pray and I say in the name of Jesus and she still walks out sick? You're walking on your faith. You're looking at your own pride. This is free. This ain't a message. So I had to do some repenting. Now we'll get into the message. God help me. And I know you will. Dear God Almighty. But before I get started, this is down. We're going on the message. My God knows everything is happening. You don't slip up behind him and bring something he didn't know that was coming. And the word of God talks about the mystery of God was, was formed before the foundation of the world. I tell you what he said. My God knows what he's doing. He ain't fooled on nothing. Amen. He knew exactly what Lucifer was fixing to do, and he knew it before it ever come to pass. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, the devil hates you. God, he hates us. But even more so now, whence Jesus has come. Because he knows now he's got but a short time to work of what Jesus has did. 
I've read some scriptures down through the years. They didn't, didn't even have no idea how what this means. God, how does this mean? And I want to ask you a question. Doesn't it say in the book of Job that the sons of God came before the throne of God, before the Lord, to offer their sacrifice, but who walked in with them? He didn't call him Lucifer. Now, I hope you get this. Please get this. My God ain't fooled on nothing. How can the Lord God Almighty stand there and look at sin and talk to it? He did, Jen. He said, have you considered my servant Job? God was proud of him. He was perfect and not proud before God. And he issued evil. Now I'm going to get on the verse of Matthew chapter 11 if y'all want to turn with me. Something my Jesus said about John the Baptist. My God had a plan. Amen. He already knew what he was fixing to do. He knew what Adam and Eve was going to do. But he used Adam and Eve in order to do something. To get my Savior into the world. Amen. And I'm going to lay one on you. God is so great and magnificent. He used a simple thing called a human being to bring forth that perfect sacrifice. Matthew 11. Help me, Lord, these eyes. Verse, let's just start verse 11. Verily. I say unto you, among them that are born of woman, there has not, be, not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Notwithstanding, he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is the greatest. This is a verse I want to get to, Eddie. And from the day of John the Baptist until now, get this, until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered it suffered violently, violence, and the violent take it by force. He, he didn't say the kingdom of the earth. He said the kingdom of heaven. Oh, it's, it's right now. <laughs> suffered violently. But see, until now, until John came in. And I'm going to say it, and the devil knew right then there was something going on. See, here's what I'm trying to get over to you. Satan thought he was so blessed smart that he could create something that God couldn't take care of. And that was sin. Where was the battle took place with the, uh, the Lucifer? and the... It was in heaven, wasn't it? Well, then there was something... Corrupt. I'm going to read you out of the Word of God where it says that it, his, his blood even cleansed things in the earth and things in the heaven. Why would it need cleansing, Eddie? Because of Satan. Satan thought he had God and there was no way out. But my God created somebody, which was called man, that he would deliver a way to get this, the word of God, which was the son of God, into the world to become a great sacrifice. And I'm going to say it. He, God is using you and me to destroy the devil. And I'm going to tell you, if it wasn't for God, you wouldn't stand a chance right now. You better wake up. We all better wake up. If God ain't on your side, you're in trouble. And it's, if it ain't for the mercies of God that keeps his hand over you, the devil would slit your throat and say, thank God I got him. And wouldn't even bother him in the least. Now if I can find it. Galatians chapter 1. And I might have to get Jen or Amy or somebody to read it. There's some big words in this. 
This old boy ain't the best education in the world. But this is what my Jesus did. This is what my father and my Jesus had a conversation. I want to say they had the guy, the guy, the God he had had a conversation before Satan ever did or Lucifer ever do what he did. He knew what he was going to do. You can't fool God. He's all knowing people. But Lucifer thought he had something that he created something that God couldn't get rid of. But he he had one thing coming. Uh, Jen, read this, honey. Galatians chapter one. Oh, I got a lot of reading here. But listen to what my what my Jesus did and my father. They all did it. Get your mic and hang on. Start with verse thirteen and read all the way down to verse twenty three. Who? Ha- who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross by him to reconcile all things unto himself by him, I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven, and you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which ye have preached, every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Do you see what that man had done? You see what my God has done? Did you, in verse 20, didn't you hear what he said, Paul? Things in earth and things in the heavens. And they suffered violently, and the violent take it by force. But see, when John came in, he zipped it up, and the devil knew something, bless God's on its way. He didn't know what, he couldn't understand it. But he knew that that, that John the Baptist was a forerunner of the one that was coming. And he come, He was already in the world. And bless God, he come into the world. And Eddie, look what this man, what the price my God has paid. And what I'm trying to get over, you wonder why the devil hates you? It's because of what he thought he had God, that God can't do nothing about it. But God took him, had a man born, and then, I mean, he's not born. He created him out of the dust of the earth, and then put him in deep sleep, took his rib, and made a woman. And that woman was going to be the way that God was going to send Jesus into this world. And you tell me my God don't know what he's doing, you don't slip upon him. He knew exactly what was coming. And listen to me, please. Look at the patience. My God's God. To wait on it, Jenny. To wait until the day of Adam. He created the world and made man and then created Adam and Eve and then waited, he waited and he waited and he waited and he tells Jesus to come in. Tell me, and what is he doing now? Patience trying to get that lost soul to believe God and get off its seat. Quit whining and complaining about everything coming and going. But believing God that God is and he's got me, he'll keep me. Amen, Jen. Oh, Lord, my God. But we've got this worldly mind. 
I can't walk on water. I can't do this. I can't. You can't know, but God can. Look at Peter. Why do you think God let that happen? Trying to show you and me that you can do it. It ain't him. It, it ain't you. It's God Almighty that does it. When you heal, the God sends you to heal somebody. It ain't you. God's doing the work. He's you just a tool or an instrument for him to use. And like you said, we got to make ourselves available. But if I don't make myself available with God, I'm going to lose out. Get mad at me if you want, but praise God, I got some scripture here in a minute. What my Jesus said. And when he says it, it's law and it cannot be broken. It cannot be broken. But Amy, I gotta quit saying, oh, woe is me or little B, I can't do that. I can't do nothing sitting right here. Cindy, I can't do, you can't do nothing sitting right there. He said, I'm not telling you to go down there and try to walk on, red, on red, uh, the Red River. But my point is, what God is saying, if you see somebody sick, why ain't you running and laying hands on them and trying to believe with everything in you that God's going to heal them? Or said by, like the 11 sitting in the boat, well, I didn't think he could do it anyway. I figured he would fall. But he tried. And that's why God said, up on this rock will I build my church. Because he wasn't afraid of failure. And another thing, he wasn't ashamed of what man thought about him. He just knew, bless God. God said it, I'm going to try it. If I hit flat on my face, so be it. God will pick me back up. Amen. Jesus didn't let him drown. I mean, he was a good swimmer. I'd say he'd been fishing. He knew I'd swim. Well, he did know I'd swim. He jumps off a boat and swims to the, in chapter 20, if I'm mistaken, or 21, somewhere around there. But listen, when are we going to hear what God is saying? When am I going to hear what the Spirit of God is saying? Steve, God can't work through you until you step out by faith and start moving with him. And if you sit there on that seat, I believe God, I know God, and you sit right there and bust hell wide open. Ain't that scary? I think it's Paul said that they confessed me with their mouth, but in the works they deny me. Jesus even said with their lips they confessed me, but their heart is far from me. Thank God. I know y'all say, I wish that old man sit down and sit up. No, he's going to say, he's going to do what God tells him. Oh, sweet love of God. My God knows what he's doing. And he knew when he saved your soul, he knew exactly what he was doing. He didn't make a mistake, Cindy, when he saved you. He knew exactly what he was doing. Now, when am I going to believe that? Not in my head, but in my heart. And start moving with God and not quit hindering God. Amen. But see, yeah, Peter denied the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. But Jesus said, I pray for you that your faith fail not. And when my Jesus prays for you, honey, it's good as gold. And you know something, Nikki? He's still in that right now for me and you both right now in heaven. He ever lived to make intercession. See, well, why should I be in worry, doubt, or trouble, or fear, or torment? Amen. That's why I get up here. I don't care whether I die tonight or not. It doesn't matter. I'm going home, bless God, to be with Jesus. The one that would love me enough to come... Out of glory to walk in this sin sick world. Amen. And to be like me so I could be like him. Amen. God, people wake up. Now I'm going to read you something. 
John chapter 12. This is my Jesus talking. Yeah. It's law and it's scriptures and it cannot be broken. Ain't a thing you can do to change it, neither can the devil, or not even Biden or anybody else. Ooh, glory. Chapter 12, verse 28. Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake unto him. Jesus answered it and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sake. Now is the, now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. Amen. Who's the prince of the earth? That's the devil. Now, Jesus said he would be cast out. Is he cast out of the earth? He's cast out of heaven. He's not allowed back in no more. And that's why he's so hot and mad now, because now, bless God, since Jesus come, he's got a short time to work. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth, for the devil has come down, and he has a short time to work. God, help me, Lord. You don't, your sin don't come in or into the presence of God no more. And they don't suffer violently anymore. Because God restored everything through Jesus Christ to himself. Made it pure, holy as he is. What did it read to you? The blood that it did for you and for everyone that believes. Blame, blameless. Holy. He said it, Jen, I go to prepare you a place. Amen, that where I am, I you would be also. Amen. God, they have got a promise. Amen. Amen. See, Jesus said this. The judgment of this world. What's he talking about? The only way you're going to get to God is through Jesus. Amen. And even Jesus said it, I think, in John 3. He talks about them that believe on me shall have eternal life, but them that believe not shall be condemned. Amen. Judgment, God had set her in order. Jesus said it. Satan said, oh, something's going on. Amen. Something's happening. I don't feel, I don't know what it is, but bless God, God's got something stirring. And there's one of the parables. Jesus talking about the Lord, sending her to his vineyard. Help me, Lord, my heart. He said, I'll send my son. They, they may reverence him. But what did they say? Let's kill him for and seize on his inheritance. See, they still thought they had it, that there was no way God could get rid of sin. Let alone in heaven. But God used a simple thing as a man or a woman to defeat the devil. You know why I say that? Read the back of the book. It's done, it's sealed, it's signed. He's going in the lake of fire and anything he can do about it. He said, this voice came not because of me, but for your sake, that you would just physically believe that who in God has sent. Amen. That's all good work is, Nikki. And you do. You do, sis. You do. And the devil is cast out. He can't come back into heaven no more because sin is not allowed in. God ain't going to look at it and he won't look at it no more. But see, the devil thought he created something. Right in heaven, there was no way God could get rid of it. But he had another thought coming. 
He thought he had him, Jim. And even when they crucified my Jesus, he still thought he had him. We got him. He's in hell with us. He's right here and he can't get out. Oh, but did they not know? Jesus never committed one sin. He was a perfect sacrifice. He took my sin into his flesh and his body. That's what killed him. You couldn't kill him no other way. And I hope I get this over. He come as an example for you and for me. He operated as the son of man, not the son of God. He walked as a man did. That's why he's saying, Nikki, these works I do even greater shall you do because I go unto my father. He made a way. And why he knew? Because, see, you're going to live a little longer than he was. He was going to be here that long. 33 and a half years ain't very long life span, baby. I don't care who you are. Huh? That's it, Jen. And look what he done in that three and a half years. A book can't even be written of all the signs and wonders and miracles he did. Why? Because he made himself available to God. He just flat believed God. Job was a servant. And God was proud of Job. Look, Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Yeah, and the Satan said, yeah, but look, you've got a hedge about him. And then he lowered lower the hedge and watch him, he'll curse you. But he didn't. We are sons and daughters. We're not a servant. Amen. Oh, help me, God. Amen. My Jesus told me, says it in his word. He says, if you do whatsoever I command you, I'll call you friend. Not servant. A friend. He can be, he wants to be my friend. He wants to be my big brother to come to my rescue in a moment's notice at a time of need. He wants to be right there and say, come on, son, let's go. Church, if we ever get, and the devil don't want you to get it, if we ever get a hold of it and start walking by faith and not by sight, we walk too much by sight, Cindy. We look at things and we see things, that's what it's got to be, not according to the Word of God. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, and the evidence of things that I see that I can't see. My God is God. He's got me, Eddie. He's got every one of you. And he did not make a mistake and he saved your soul. If I can get this over, please help me, Lord. I hope I can scare you on something. The devil wants to kill you at a heartbeat. If it wasn't for God, he'd done done it. When are we going to wake up and start, God, I'm going your way. I want to give you my whole heart, soul, mind, and body, God. Because, Lord God, if I don't go with you, he's going to be waiting on me. And how many times, Nikki, do you suppose down through your lives that all of a sudden you didn't see it, but an angel of God stepped between you and death and moved it over How many times you reckon the Lord said, stay home for a few minutes. You lose your car keys or you do this or you do. You can't find them. God said, saving your soul from what's coming down the road. But we want to whine, oh God, why, why? Church, wake up. I'm going to try to shut up. Satan's cast out of heaven. Y'all, you got your own beliefs, but I'm standing on what I believe the Word of God said. And I believe, bless God, what Jesus said, Steve, that they, the kingdom of heaven suffered it violently. And the violence took it by force. Means that, in other words, they almost, they thought they had God under the hand, that there's nothing God could do about it. But God done knew what was coming before it ever happened. Just like I'm trying to get over to you all. He knows your life before you even... He knows what's happening in 30 minutes from now. He knows what's fixing to come. And God knows I better trust Him. Amen. When I get that easy feeling that I need to sit down for a few minutes, 
you better sit down because there's something coming. And you just, oh, Lord, I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I, I don't, I don't just don't want to go over there. Lord. You better stay home. But to you, church, what I'm trying to do, what the Lord's trying to get over. I know that's a funny question, but now he come to me Friday morning and asked me that. And the patience that my God is God, and God, he's had it with me. But look at what he's doing down the road, sissy. He's had patience from the day one all the way up to now. And he'll have patience until the rest of it's fulfilled. And then Satan is destroyed. Not destroyed, but he's put in the lake of fire and he'll be tormented. And it says in the presence of the angels of God, just like hell is right now, can look up and see paradise. And Steve, that's torment. You bust, I bust hell wide open, and I look up and see Barbara in the, up there with Abraham. Now that's one man. But see, he gave me that choice. I can sit on that seat and get so afraid to get up and pray for somebody or go and say this or whatever the Lord said. He said I can't, I can't. No, God can't. Going in the Spirit of God. But it takes time to learn how to work in the Spirit of God. And I'm going to say it, church. Some of us older saints should have it pretty well down pat right now. I'm talking about me. But even me, thank God for his patience. that he'll come by in the wee hours of the morning and he'll say, he'll do this. I want to talk to you. Get up. And sometimes he'll come and just wake me up. He said, don't get up. You can lay there. But me and you got to talk. And I thank God for those times, Cindy. That somebody knows my heart better than I know it. And he knows Matthew whether I want to or I don't. And still with that patience, he still keeps pushing. If I don't want to, he'll keep pushing, trying to help me to see and understand. That's him, God. That's, he. That's the way he is, Steve. He's God. But see, everybody wants to look. Yeah, God can only do one thing at a time. No, bless God. God can do many things at one time. He's, how's that? How can you say all uh, that word? Oh, you got it. He can be everywhere at once. And I'm thinking now when Jesus, God was in Jesus, according to the word of God. But he heard a voice from heaven. I have glorified thee and I shall glorify thee again. And when Jesus said, I'll lift, if I be lifted up, I can't quite help me. I'll draw all men unto he was. He was talking about being lifted up on that cross. Amen. That he was going to be that perfect sacrifice for heaven Amen. and earth. For heaven and man. Amen. I could be just like him. Think on this. You could walk just like Jesus. But you've got to have the faith. Get off my seat. And like I told, I told Amy and Jen this. God knows if I go down to my Red River and try to walk on it, and I can't swim, baby. And it would have to be faith. <laughs> but see, when are you going to make yourself available for God? Is it only here when you come into church, or do you even not do it here? When God needs you, it's wherever you're at. Or you will to be the light of the world for this lost and dying world. But when we're afraid to speak, afraid to do, afraid to say, I'm going to tell you, the devil done got you. I'm trying to hush, Amy. But God knows what he's doing. Please, I hope I get you to understand. You, you don't fool God. You don't come up behind him. Nothing comes up behind him and takes him by surprise. He knew what Lucifer was going to do before he ever done it. 
He knew what that, I am not even say it, in that first bunch he created, he gave them the authority and the power. Just like, it's just like me. I want my sons and daughters to be just like me. Just know everything I know. God wanted so man so much to be loved like that. But now, the only way you can get that power is to be holy as he is holy. Amen. Through that blood. Jen, it's, it's not going over the blood, but through the blood. Amen. Too many of us want to go over it or around it. But when you get that whole heart and soul and mind, you want to go through it. And when you go through it, something happens. It's well, honey, it's clean. Amen, gently. You and bless God. The and I'll, I'll stand on it. Jesus said, "Who I, the Son has set free is free indeed." Then, when bless God, I'm free, whether I feel like it or not. I am free. Amen. Why He said so. Amen. Amen. Amy, it's time I get it. How did this? When I see somebody in here sick, I should walk over and say in the name of Jesus, Cindy, be thou made whole. And believe it. And if it ain't, so be it. But what if it is? And what if, bless God, maybe you go down to, I'm just using this, you go down to Red River and you're sitting there and you're praying a minute. Then all of a sudden you get up and you start walking across that water. Oh, bless God, you come back shouting in, wouldn't you? God's looking. Didn't he say it? Did Amy even read it to you? Sister R.P. said it. The eyes of the Lord is upon them. Looking to and fro to seeking someone. He can show himself strong. But you've got to make yourself available. And available means, bless God, I'm going to use it. Reading, prayer, and fasting. My Jesus did it. He did that for, for you and me to show us that you needed it. And what he was doing was coming out from among the world, getting in the presence of his father. Why? Because he loved him. He wanted to be with him so much. When are you and me going to get that in our hearts that we want to be with him so much? That it's, it just aches and hurts city just not to, to not even to get to go pray or say, oh, God, I want to talk to you. It's not a dread, Steve. It's not a dread to read the Word of God. It's not a dread. To, well, I'm going to fast today. Oh, help me, Lord. Thank you, God. He just said something. Remember in the book of Luke, I think it's 17. He's talking about increase our faith. And Jesus, you know, used it as the wait on, on, on the table. They wait on, uh, feed you and then, you know. They, but when you've done all you've been commanded to do, you're still unprofitable. If you want to increase your faith, read more than you usually read. Pray more than you usually pray. Fast more. Well, I'm going to fast one day. Well, what about two? That's doing more than what you feel. You, know. you see what I'm saying? That's increasing your faith and being profitable to God. You're making yourself available for the Master's use. I know it's getting late, and God help us. Cindy, we've got something, honey, if we just let it out. We're, we're doing just like what Jesus told Peter. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. It's time I begin to loose the Spirit of God Amen. and let it do what it wants to do and quit binding it. Well, nobody said I have to do this. I, can't. I got this. I can't do it. Yeah. Do what God tells you to do. Whether you, I hope I get to, whether you feel like it or you don't. If God has told you something, do it. Regardless of heartache or the trouble. Because God knows you're going to suffer for his will. But he said only them that suffer with shall reign with him. So bless God. I just thank God and I'll try to shut up. My God is smart. He, the words can't describe him. You can try to find words, but you can't. 
His greatness, his magnificence. He is almighty God. And he loves me, Steve. And he loves you all. And he's called this church for work. And you better be about his work. And God knows you don't want to do like what Jesus did with uh, Judas. He gave him the sob. And immediately the devil entered into him. God's got that power. That he'll go so far. And then he'll say, give him the sop, which is other words, I'll remove my spirit. And I don't want that, Cindy. Oh, honey. But please, God, I don't want to scare anybody. Yeah, I do. I want to scare you right out of the arms of the devil into the arms of Jesus. Fear God. Fear God. 